What's going on everybody? Welcome to the Master Wing channel. I hope you guys are enjoying the Oceania content. You know what we're doing here. We're playing another game. Check out this bird. Princess Stephanie's Estrapia. Choose one other player. You both lay one egg. Let's go. It only has one egg space. Got Odwings, Great Teal. Great Teal, look at three cards from the deck. Keep one, if there is one. And you can add it to your hand or tuck. Haven't played the Gray Teal yet, so why not? We'll go Viddy for bonus card. Got a Red Winged Parrot in the tray. I still like Odoins from the Euro expansion. Birds in the Wetlands. Round one. I think we'll probably grab this red wing parrot. Uh, we haven't played that bird before. It's probably not the best turn there, but we're feeling generous today. This is just a fun game. That's the purpose. We're play testing. All right. Seeing what works, what doesn't. We're going to live and learn. We've got... Princess Stephanie Estrapia on deck. And we have a Red Wing Parrot. They both have generous sharing powers. All right. So, oh man, turn one Spangled Drongo. Check this out, guys. Pink power when another player gains a nectar. You gain a nectar from the supply. That is a strong move in a game or in the land of nectar. This could be trouble. <laughs> we go with Princess Stephanie. Kind of feels like a six point chipping sparrow here, except giving my opponent an egg as well. Um, but could be helpful if we have to lay an egg on a specific nest type. I don't know if we'll have a grasslands or not, but that Spangled Drongo, I don't think that pink power, I don't, it doesn't matter if it's a gain food action. I believe it activates even like on a, just a brown power. Like if I had a Raven and I gained nectar using the Raven power. I think the Drongo would activate. We'll have to find out here, but uh, we'll gain some food. Put some, uh, well, actually, since I'm gonna lay an egg here, we could play forest. No, I don't think we can play forest. We don't have the food for the forest yet, but uh, We'll go with wetlands, that's fine. We do have some decent draw power. Do I wanna play gray teal or the gull first? My opponent plays ruddy duck, old school ruddy. It's a great starter bird for Oceania. The thing about this Oceania wetlands, like with a ruddy duck or pie billed grebe or common yellow throat, I'm gaining food here, as you can tell. Uh, I don't know. Like, you can you can play one bird in the wetlands and draw four cards already. And then you could play four more birds in the wetlands. And what do you do? You draw four cards. So it's really just a matter of if the player wants to gain some points while doing so. But if you're just looking for four cards, you really don't need a ton of wetland birds. That's what, that's what it feels like. But if you want to add tucking or some predators in between... The first slot and the fifth slot. I mean, obviously, probably going to help you score in the long run. St 
still trying to get used to this. It's going to be weird to go back to the original board. I don't know how long the, the real version is going to take to release. But I feel like I'm going to come back and try to play a tournament. I think the World Cup is coming up soon. And if we're playing on the original board, I'm going to be messed up. Because I'm used to this, uh, or I'm trying to get used to this Oceania board. I like the Brolga as well. Um, you give another player an egg, we could be really generous there. But I played the Brolga recently, so we're just trying out different stuff. Not going to be too critical here. The Red Wing Parrot, you give one Nectar away to a player. And I can either choose to lay two eggs after I do that, or I can gain two more food. So it's sharing, it's a sharing six point bird, but uh, you know, if we need those eggs, it, it may come in handy. We'll see. I could get punished. I'm not used to sharing this much. Oceania brings the sharing is carrying birds. Just depends on if your opponent can handle it or knows what to do with it. And I've played Ronster many times. I'm pretty sure he's going to take advantage of it. Okay, I think I'm thinking too hard on this. Uh, we'll just go ahead and gain some extra food. Start uh, stockpiling up for all these birds we're about to draw. And why not? Let's lay some more eggs. <laughs> Come on, Princess Stephanie. I don't I don't know if my opponent has gained food yet. Um that drongo is not gonna be nice when I'm starting to build a forest engine. We could grab Waxwing. It goes with the Viticulture's bonus card. I might have some extra cards to tuck. I kind of want to play newer birds though I don't know see how we feel I think we're on tilt a little bit played so many games now we're handing out nectar and eggs <laughs> we're going with the gray teal basically because it's new um, again we look at three cards keep a wetland bird I can tuck it or discard it big gray teal energy And my opponent plays three wetland birds. I was hoping maybe this Audwin's goal would tie it. Hmm. Do I still want to play it? Or do I want to draw cards? You know what? Since we're going to lose the end round, I think I'm going to draw cards here. And I think I do want the wax wing. Bush tit, that's not a bad pickup. You could probably find some use. Oh man, the gray teal. I wanted that Blyce Hornbill. That would have been perfect with red wing parrot and viticulturist. But there's no wetland birds, so we discard all of those. Come on, gray teal. That was a little disappointing. That's all right. Oh, man. Opponent plays Common Swift. Not a good start, people. We've got 12 points worth of birds in the forest. That's our silver lining. And we're, we're almost committed to sharing. Uh, 
I gotta figure out where to put these birds we have. Um, only have the food available for Ottoweens. I think my opponent picked up Kelp Gull, which is an interesting Oceania bird. It lets you discard as many food as you want, I think. And for every food discarded, you can draw that many cards. So if you have excess food, that, that card could be busted. I'm wondering if he's going to leave the Noisy Miner... had success with the noisy miner okay so he left the noisy miner we have a mally fowl and a cockatoo I think the noisy miner may be worth it. The brown power of the, no the noisy miner, you took a card from your hand, and if you do, you lay up to two eggs on that bird. So it's a three point play for you, and then you also pass out an egg to uh, other players. So it's a plus two if you activate the noisy miner. We're we're feeling generous. Why not? And we'll take the warbler. We'll take it. Kind of have a weird forest engine going on. It's uh, passing out eggs, but we're experimenting. I'm kind of second guessing that last card draw. We could have played Ottoweens first and then drew. Since they left the miner, it probably would have been there. And then I could have seen another card. Um, not our best move. But uh, in Oceania, I don't know if you've had this same experience. There's a lot of mistakes being made. During this playtest, trying to get used to this new layout. We also picked up the Sulfur Crested Cockatoo that lets you tuck a card. And what else does it do? I think it gives all players a nectar. I don't know if we're going to play it or not. It could be non-stop sharing. Probably not our best game, but I thought an uploaded game is better than nothing. And if you enjoy watching it as much as I do most of the time, um, I thought it was worthwhile. My audio isn't great. I'm recording on like a six inch iPhone, so apologies. This is not our best quality video, but uh, I think we have a chance here. I think we have a chance with the birds we have. Um, the question is if our sharing will get the best of us. Everybody knows Oceania has a lot of sharing birds. And we're, we're playing a community game. You know, I'm looking at this board and one mechanic on this layout that I don't think is talked about or used very much um, suspense, my, my opponent played Toei, and trying to debate which one we want to do here, I guess we'll force down the miner, anyway, one, one thing on this layout that I don't think is used much is that um, section in the second slot in the wetlands um, you know W2 that, that second column where you can discard a food to reset the tray 
it's a feature I, I don't think many people are utilizing. I, I've used it sometimes. But, you know, if, if you're not happy with the birds in the tray, I'm seeing players draw two blind from the top deck, and they have, like, four food. And with it being so easy to collect food, usually, in Oceania... You know, I'm wondering if we need to start paying more attention to just resetting the tray and then drawing two cards. It could, you know, reveal just an awesome card versus drawing two from the, from the deck blindly. I don't know. Uh, we're going to have to play with that. Of course, there's also the... Um, mechanic in the forest if you discard an extra food you can reset the tray i mean the bird feeder but with it being so easy to collect food and you know a lot of re-rolls i don't know if that one will be used as much i think i used it one time at the end of the round when i couldn't grab nectar and i really needed a fish it may just be a rare uh, occurrence here we go, Noisy Miner scoring three points, but actually a plus two after we give our opponent an egg. I like the Miner. I've played it in the Grasslands historically. More of a conventional lay eggs engine. And for this round with birds in one row, I'm thinking... For the last three turns, we gain food and then uh, play a couple birds. I'm trying to make the best of this engine, but I'm not feeling good about it at this point in the game. Mostly just because we're sharing. I'm not ready to write off all sharing birds in Oceania. I know we're a broken record here, but, you know, in the core game, you could say, okay, I'm not going to play Hummingbird. I'm not going to use the Phoebe, and it was very easy. But some of these birds that share have benefits to them that, that the core game didn't. Like the Hummingbird strictly got food, but the Red-Winged Parrot lays two eggs, or the Noisy Miner tucks and lays two eggs. And so it's hard to just write all of those birds off. Um, not ready to do so. Plus, they're really fun to activate. All right. Uh, two turns left in round two. So my opponent plays the Cysticola. Let you play another bird with a one-egg discount. Plays the Little Bustard. Wonder if he got lucky on that bonus card. We're going to go with the Sulfur Crested Cockatoo. It lets you tuck one. Uh, from your hand, and then all players get a nectar. I think the theme with the cockatoos is uh, tucking but sharing. The sulfur crested gives out nectar. The gala get, lets the another player gain a seed from the bird feeder, if available, after a reset. And Major Mitchell's Cockatoo, you tuck, and I think everybody gets a seed. So that's kind of a cool little theme for Cockatoos sharing and tucking. And we play Prothonotary Warbler at the end of the round. Uh, looks like we are going to win this end of round goal. I feel like we're behind, but we are hanging in at this point. Man. And we get to go first and... This Ottoween's goal, it just feels too late to gain food just for the Ottoween's, play the Ottoween's for a neutral play. So it's too late for the goal. And we are going to try to discard a food here and reset the tray, that mechanic I was talking about, and we see basically nothing we want. I may try the Crested Pigeon. Why not? Oh, Pukeko and Little Penguin. The Pukeko lets you lay eggs in the wetlands, which is good. 
but we may try the little penguin. We haven't played it yet. It's uh, seven points without the brown power. And I was okay discarding that food to reset the tray just because I can get pretty much any food I want. Uh, we got a nice reroll with nectar. And actually, this yellow breasted chat would complete my viticulturist. It's not the best berry eating bird, but if I don't grab another one, that'll work. Just making sure here. Um, so we actually skipped the sulfur crested cockatoo because if I tuck under the miner, that actually gives me two two points instead of one. And we don't have all the extra cards I intend. So here's another mistake I think. To play Noisy Miner and Cockatoo, I think I should have had more cards in hand. So this engine right here is one point plus two, that's three. And then if I lay eggs on the parrot, that would be five point engine. But along with that five points, we're giving away a Nectar. We're giving away two nectars and an egg for five points. <laughs> Uh-oh. Need to restart. My opponent plays burrowing now. Here we go with a little penguin energy. And you can kind of see the writing on the wall on this one. Um, you know, we're going to draw some extra cards that we can tuck under the Noisy Miner and the Cockatoo. And while we draw, I'm hoping the Penguin works. So check out this original audio. Turn up your volume with the Penguin. That was trash in a half. Golly. Are you freaking serious? So obviously I was pretty frustrated with the little penguin. Uh, this is a voiceover and I didn't realize that when I originally played this it was um, picking that up as well. So um, the little penguin lets you look at five cards from the deck for those that don't know, and if there's a fish in the food cost, however many there are, you can cash it on the little penguin. And so I was kind of hoping for a break there. I, I, I don't know the percentages, but five cards, I was hoping at least one of them would have a fish and I could get a cash. So anyway, I'm pretty sure the penguin might be the most sucker bird in the game. I don't know anybody who doesn't want to try the little penguin. I just I don't know anybody who, you know, doesn't like the artwork. I mean, it's a penguin and it has a interesting power. It's kind of gambling there and you know, you can't play Oceania without at least trying the little penguin once. So we're moving towards more of a post commentary now. The style of this game is obviously wetlands for extra cards, hope to pick up something good like some big birds, and then uh, go back to this forest that theoretically could get me five points, but again, we're passing out so many resources. Uh, it just feels like it's slipping away a little bit. Um, we are ahead of the round goal, and I also picked up White Stork and the Long Spur. Finally got some bonus card help. I've got a yellow-breasted chat in the back. 
that isn't my favorite bird at all, but it does complete my Bidiculturist bonus card. So we have some ways to score, but yeah, we need to spend this nectar before the end of the round. And I'm a little curious about this crested pigeon. If the bird feeder helps us gain a bunch of seeds. Um, just making sure where we need to spin this nectar. Because I could play white stork as well. I'm thinking for the nectar battle. Um, the little icons on the left. I would like to see a different uh, logo or symbol or icon for when you are tied because I'm, you know, I'll see that, hey, I have the, the gold star in the, in the wetlands, the forest, and then I look over to my opponent's board and I see that I'm tied. And so I think I, I wish Monster Couch would kind of adjust that because I like it, but I mean, winning and tying, that's, that's very different and they, they have the same icon. Just a little suggestion there. Man, my opponent goes first this round and the American Woodcock pops up in the tray. I'm assuming they take that. We would have loved to have played that in the grasslands. That was something we needed. I think we probably want to draw cards one more time. Um, because, I don't know. I'm just not super pumped about this White Stork and, and uh, Yellow Breasted Chat. I feel like, you know, if I'm going to go into the forest at least one more time, I might as well have some extra cards to tuck. So here we go. I think we try the little penguin again for redemption. I think that's what happens. Before we go to the forest, I need some extra cards. Uh, the sea eagle... Um, I'm, I'm not sure if I picked that up or not. Seven points. It is big points, but it doesn't beat the white stork or the chat with the bonus card. So I'm kind of hoping to get lucky right here. You know, if I had a egret or something, a double play into the sea eagle, maybe I'd pick it up. Carrion crow and bee eater <laughs> Cooper's hawk. We basically got nothing. And check it out again. Just one fish. Can I get a break? Not one single fish. Um, I'm not ready to completely give up on the penguin. But it has failed me this game. Especially when I need every point. My opponent just has this grassland. I don't think they've hardly ever gained food because of all the sharing we're doing and here we are the last three turns um I, i'm not feeling super confident about it we will break a hundred but in oceania i'm not sure that's a big deal uh we're doing our five point engine let's talk about lessons learned so you can learn from my mistakes in this play testing um, so, Princess Stephanie's Estrapia, six-point bird, and I like it in the beginning of the game because I could lay eggs and play birds pretty quickly when I didn't have eggs. I liked it at the end of the game, right here, because I can lay eggs purposefully on birds with ground nests. Um, and since I don't have a grassland, you know, it helps me. But should I have activated during round two and three when I didn't necessarily need eggs, I, that might have helped my opponent more than me. So I think that's a lesson learned. Uh, the little penguin. I, I'm not sure we go out of our way to grab the little penguin. Um, it's definitely high on the fun factor, but, but I can't rely on it to score points, it, at least until it proves me wrong. So I, I was I was a sucker and definitely went for the penguin. 
the cockatoo would be good, but but I don't think it was great uh, since I didn't have a ton of extra cards. Um, it did help me with the Viticulturist bonus card, so kind of a catch-22 if that was a good play or not. My opponent has the Spangled Drongo. I mean, first play of the game. And I'm thinking hindsight, to counter the Drongo, you just don't gain Nectar. And an Oceania Land of Nectar game turns into a Nectarless game. Uh, forcing my opponent to develop a forest or something like that. Because all they have, I think, is the Toei. And then they've relied on my food that I'm giving them with the Red Winged Parrot, uh, the Cockatoo, and then I'm giving them an egg. So we, we've, we've talked about the sharing birds. I think we just need to be more strategic in that way and alter the game. Um, you know, I'm used to getting nectar now all the time but with a drongo i mean we we maybe could have pinned our opponent better if they don't have any food for that grassland so i think that's a lesson learned um what else yellow breasted chat i think we were just uh as far as gameplay we were trying to decide where to place it for nectar i make a mistake and i don't um, discard off of the red winged parrot. I've also found that the crested pigeon is tough to make work. You think with a forest engine you're going to have a bunch of extra seeds, but then you're playing a bunch of high food cost birds and get depleted very quickly. Um, having eight extra seeds is not as easy as it sounds, and so that that was probably a bad draw as well. But we wanted to play test. We wanted to get better. And I think this helped us to get better. And when you're losing, you got to revert to, did you have fun? We definitely had fun. Uh, check out that white stork play. I play it in the wetlands because I think, oh, I need to discard eggs off the red winged parrot. I mean, I'm just making mistake after mistake on this game. But I hope you can appreciate on the Master Wing channel that we do not upload just... Uh, crushing victories where we're just dominating the game. Uh, the question is, how close are we going to be? Um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking I'm posting like a maybe a 108, 110 score. Um, here we go. And laying eggs with this forest one last time. Did we use all of our resources correctly? I do not think so. Uh, you don't want to have six food at the end of your game just sitting there. And with Oceania, with just so you know plentiful resources, that's going to determine tournament winners and tournament losers, how you allocate your resources. I don't think that's anything new in Wingspan, but in Oceania especially. Like how many of us ended with for food in uh, the core game. Like hardly ever. Uh, you, you almost never had extra food, and if you did, you were using it for a teal power. So uh, this game, allocating those resources, where you spend that nectar, what you do with those extra cards, those are going to be the slim margins that uh, we got to work out. So we tie the forest, which isn't terrible and then we win the wetlands. So we're basically neck and neck on Nectar. Could we be in for a surprise score here? Did I set you up? Let's see. We're winning on bird points. He had a monster bonus card game. Tied on the end of round. Here's where the grassland, oh, so many eggs. We had more tucks and we tie on Nectar, 130 to 115. We made so many mistakes. We had errors, we had little penguin misses, we shared, and we still got 115. So silver lining there, 130, congrats to my opponent. Uh, they absolutely crushed it. And um, I wanna see their bonus cards real quick. 
because they had like 23 bonus card points. Platform builder, ecologist, man, that American Woodcock. That was a big point play. Mechanical engineer, they maxed out, and wetland scientist. So, but with the Toei, I'm thinking we just don't grab nectar, we don't give the Drongo help, and we pivot from a forest. Maybe a different outcome. Thanks for watching, guys. Master Wing, peace.